Hello, thanks for watching TCM. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Throughout the month, all the movies we're showing are Warner Brothers Pictures, part of our salute to the studio's 100th anniversary. Ten of those films have been newly preserved or restored in honor of that milestone. We worked in partnership with the Film Foundation on that front. It's the organization founded by Martin Scorsese in 1990, dedicated to the restoration of movies around the world. Regarding our next film, last summer, actor, director, writer, and producer Ethan Hawke Join me on TCM to discuss his six-part documentary series for HBO Max, The Last Movie Stars. Martin Scorsese served as an executive producer. The series detailed, in inventive fashion, the lives and careers of perhaps Hollywood's defining glamour couple, Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward, who were married for 50 years before Newman's death in 2008. Our next film tonight is from Warner Brothers in 1968, Rachel Rachel, starring Joanne Woodward, and directed by Paul Newman. And I'm pleased to say, here to introduce the HD remaster and 4K preservation of Rachel Rachel, is the director of the documentary series The Last Movie Stars, a man nominated for four Academy Awards, two for writing, two for acting, Ethan Hawke. I'm in the exact middle of my life. Everything else from now on is just rolling downhill into my grave. Hello, I'm Ethan Hawke. Thank you for joining me for 1968's Rachel Rachel. I'm so excited that you're interested in going to watch this film. I made a documentary about Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward, and one of the secret revelations for me was discovering this film. I think it lives in the centerpiece of their romance together and is the key to understanding both of them so this is 1968. He just made Butch Cassidy and Sennett's Kid. He's the stud of studs in American iconography. And here he is setting out to make a movie about a woman's midlife sexual identity. It's subject matter of a small European film. It's such a shocking thing for him to do. But if you get intimate with who Paul Newman really is, this is a man who was madly in love with another actor named Joanne Woodward. Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward were great artists of their day. And this is a milestone. It was a big deal to make a movie in celebration of his wife's artistry. And he tried to help get it financed with somebody else and they just couldn't raise the money to make it. And he was like, well, I'm gonna direct it. He'd been flirting with directing in his mind's eye for a while. And she believed in him and they took their own money and made this movie. And curiously enough, it's written by Stuart Stern, who was their best friend. So when you get a group of really intelligent people working together, um, you know, magic can happen, and it's worth preserving. Say it with me, love. <laughs> when I first saw it, I thought, oh, I bet he was really jealous of Cassavetes and Jenna Rollins. Cassavetes and Jenna Rollins are often credited with starting the American independent film scene and their love affair. Then he realized that this was made b before a lot of those movies. Cassavetes was coming out of Actors Studio, as was Paul Newman. And the same machine is working about how to tell stories and how to try to revolutionize American independent film. God, please, whoever you are, please let him see me again. The key takeaway, I think, in understanding this film, and it's going to sound a little corny, but is that it's really, it's built on love. And a lot of times things built on love can go wrong if they're undisciplined. But one of the fascinating things about Paul Newman, the director, is it's exactly the same as Paul Newman, the actor, the race car driver, the philanthropist. He was incredibly disciplined person. This movie, Rachel, Rachel, I feel like it's built like a watch. Every second matters. Every piece fits into the piece before it. And that's easy to say when you're talking about something with a very complex plot or something. This is an emotional plot. And those are much more difficult to navigate the inner machinations of how the film works. Estelle Parsons kind of steals the show. I feel like a lot of people have forgotten what a genius Estelle Parsons is. I made a fool of myself. We're all fools. You can't be part of the human race and not be a fool to somebody. And I can't trust myself anymore. I don't know. Oh, I I want to say thank you to Warner Brothers for caring about this movie, for making it in the first place, for restoring it. Whether we're talking about painting or whether we're talking about music or poetry or film, 
Understanding the past of where we come from and understanding the stories that have been told before us, I think is so essential. Imagine if each generation has to stop and start itself and you don't get to build on what's been learned before you. I remember when I showed this movie to my mother who, you know, remembers when it came out and, and hadn't seen it. And it was really fun because I, I had my younger kids who are like 25 and 21 and all of us were hypnotized by this movie and, and for a small delicate film to capture multiple generations for different reasons it's a testament to the quality of work where i'm going anything may happen nothing may happen this is ethan hawk i hope you enjoy rachel rachel as much as i do for turner classic movies and the film foundation we say thank you for your time and enjoy the show That was a new restoration of Rachel Rachel, a collaboration between TCM, Warner Brothers, and the Film Foundation in honor of the studio's 100th anniversary. Special thanks to actor, writer, and director Ethan Hawke for introducing the film. Rachel Rachel was Paul Newman's first foray into producing and directing a feature film. Despite being one of the biggest stars in Hollywood, it took more than Newman's name to get financing for the project. Eventually, Newman's agent was able to strike a deal with Warner Brothers. The studio agreed to finance the picture, but only if Newman signed on to make two more films as an actor at much less than his regular salary. The studio also wanted Joanne Woodward to make a similar deal. They really had us over a barrel, Newman said. He and Woodward agreed, but Newman had a condition of his own. In an interview with film critic Judith Christ, Newman explained he wanted the executive in charge of the studio at the time, a man he trusted to oversee which movies he and Woodward would be assigned to fulfill the contract. Newman didn't name the executive, but it certainly could have been Jack Warner. This was 1967, and Warner had sold the studio the year before to Seven Arts, but the merger didn't go through until the summer of 67, right as Rachel Rachel began shooting. By the time the production was finished in the fall of 67, a different executive was running the show, meaning Newman and Woodward did not have to honor the deal. Coming up, a 1968 Western starring Jimmy Stewart and Henry Fonda. Fire Creek is next on TCM.